In this video I would like to show you that the Dirac equation can also be derived more intuitively. Let's remember how we derived the Schrodinger equation. We derived the Schrodinger equation starting from the classical equation that the energy E is equal to for the particular case of a particle, so we are considering just one particle, it is equal to the momentum squared of the particle divided by 2m, right? And from this equation one can derive by associating the operator of the energy, which is I h bar d over dt, with the energy itself. And if we associate the operator minus I h bar gradient to the momentum operator, we can get the Schrodinger equation, and this is of course equal to I h bar d over dt psi. We put uh, the wave function there next to the energy operator and then we have the Hamiltonian which is the actual energy operator. So this is the real energy operator which is the Hamiltonian. Sometimes by a little misuse of notation we associate this operator here to the energy. Okay, so that's kind of improper to say that. And this is the Hamiltonian, okay. So we associate this Hamiltonian to this quantity here and the Hamiltonian applied to the wave function psi or this is also equal to minus h bar squared del squared divided by 2m psi. Okay, so this is the Schrodinger equation, this uh, equation here. And then uh, if you do something similar for special relativity, so you, you would like to write an equation that's also true in special relativity, that's covariant. This equation here, the Schrodinger equation is not covariant because we have the operator d over dt on one side and we have del squared on the other side. So we have the second derivative with respect to space, but we only have first order derivatives with respect to time on the left. This is some kind of asymmetry that uh, we can try to remove actually. And this can be done according to the relativistic equation for the energy, which is given by E squared equal to PC squared plus MC squared all squared, right? And from this, one can derive the Klein-Gordon equation, which I can write down like this. You can obtain d mu d mu phi plus M squared C squared over H bar squared phi equal to zero. And usually we set C equal to one and also H equal to one. So this quantity here can be set equal to one and what you get is that del mu del mu phi plus m squared phi is equal to zero right just like this but this equation the klein gordon equation does not describe an electron for example so what this equation describes is just bosons so particles which have zero spin and we have seen something like this in the first part of the course so this is an appendix to the course even if this equation is relativistic this does not describe particles such as electrons for example the schrodinger equation on the other hand was very good at describing electrons that can be considered in classical systems so this can describe electrons and uh, schrodinger actually found uh, the klein gordon equation first but then it just discarded it because it wasn't able to mathematically describe the hydrogen atom, for example. Okay, so the hydrogen atom can be described by the Schrodinger equation. But now, if we want to construct a relativistic equation for the electron, we have to try to work in another way. Dirac had an idea. The idea that Dirac had was to use the relativistic equation. Let's rewrite it like this. We have E squared minus P squared. And now let me set the speed of light equal to 1 for simplicity, the square root of this. And then this is equal to m. Now we have to substitute some operators. Inside this square root, we have something like del 0 squared minus del i del i something like this because momentum is related to del i del i and then we have del zero square so let me change this index i to k otherwise we can get confused with the imaginary unit you also have some i squared here and we have to take the square root of this if you square these quantities so if you also square the left hand side you will get the klein gordon equation so this quantity here is just del mu del mu just like that right but what the Dirac wanted to write down in this case was something a little different. So he wanted to rewrite this operator here, the operator contained in this um, parenthesis. He wanted to rewrite it like this, like a square of some operator. And this operator is given by AK, a four vector, but we will understand soon enough that this should be a vector of matrices, the so-called Dirac matrices, but we will soon find out. And then I will put DK here plus a0 del 0 so we have to square this so let's see so we want to find the square of this operator here and equate this operator to that operator contained in that parenthesis there so how to do that if we multiply out the terms that we have here 
we have AK DK plus A0 del 0 multiplied by AJ del J plus A0 del 0 and this is equal to AK AJ del squared KJ plus AK A0 del squared K0 plus A0 AJ del squared 0j plus a0 squared del 0 squared okay and now we can rewrite these quantities because the only way for these quantities to give rise to something like that is for these quantities to be matrices they should be matrices and they are vectors of matrices so they are not really scalars they should be operators so we can think of them as matrices and we can write these quantities like this so one half the anti-commutator of AK, AJ because of symmetry. So we have del squared KJ and if we change the indices K and J, that's a symmetric expression. So that's why we can rewrite AK, AJ as one half the anti-commutator because we have to sum over K and J and this expression is symmetric. And then we have plus one half anti-commutator AK, A0 del squared K0. I mean, this is for the same reason because the indices 0 and k are symmetric, we can exchange them. And then plus 1 half commutator a0 aj del squared 0j plus, plus a0 squared del 0 squared, just like this. And now we have to impose some conditions. The conditions that we have to impose are the following. We want to impose that a0 squared is equal to the identity matrix and then the anti-commutator AK AJ should be equal to minus 2 delta KJ times the identity matrix and this identity matrix would be a 4x4 four four matrix because only 4x4 four four matrices or higher order matrices can uh, satisfy these constraints so no 2x2 two two matrices so here we have K and J which can be equal to 1, 2 and 3 that's why I'm using Roman letters. Another condition that we have to impose is that the anti-commutator AK A0 is equal to 0, the 0 matrix if you want. And if you put these relations together, what you get is that the anti-commutator between A mu A nu is equal to 2 era mu nu times i, the identity. Okay? And what is this? This is just the cliff for algebra, if you recall. And uh, the matrices that we found during the course that satisfy this cliff for algebra are the gamma matrices. So I can also call them just gamma mu, gamma nu here. Just like this. And now if we use these uh, conditions, this quantity above here, it will just reduce to del 0 squared times the identity. And then we have minus delta ij del squared ij, like this. So but this is just del 0 squared minus del i del i so here we have to sum over i so maybe i could have rewritten this as del i del j times delta i j like this so what is this this is del mu del mu so we have found that the operator a k del k plus a 0 del 0 this is just uh, the square root. This is not a rigorous mathematical expression, but it's something like the square root of the operator del mu del mu, which is what we wanted. We wanted to find the square root of that. I times the operator a mu del mu, or if you want, this is just del slash. And we have to act on some wave function. In this case, this is not just a wave function. It is a four vector because a mu is a four by four matrix. And on the other side, we have m, times phi. What we know is that uh, both sides of the equation, this side here and this side, so I'm not considering the, the um, wave function psi, I'm just considering what multiplies the wave function. If I square this term, I will get m squared. If I square this term, I will get minus 1 from i squared, and then this will multiply del mu del mu. So if you take a look at the operator that you get, you have del mu del mu plus m squared and then you have some wave function here equal to zero. So this is the Klein-Gordon equation if you square both sides. But let me direct your attention towards one fact. If I square the right-hand side, I can also square the quantity minus m. 
and this can be equal to m squared. So the Dirac equation can also be written with a minus sign, right? Or I can also put the minus sign in front on the left hand side. I can also rewrite the equation like this minus i del slash psi equal to m psi, and from here you get i del slash plus m times psi equal to zero. 